This coverage is brought to you by Rami Rent. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to some more disc golf media coverage. We're coming at you today with the second stop on the European Pro Tour at Yerva Disc Golf Course. We've got the Round 1 MPO feature card. I'm Tony Farrow. And with him, Connor Wood, as we see these competitors set the stage in the heart of Stockholm, Sweden at Yerva Disc Golf Park. Absolutely beautiful course, and I'm very excited to see what our players have for us today. Oh, me as well. This is a iconic disc golf course here in Europe. But very lots. much legacy, a lot of history here. Very much, lots of history. Almost lost the course a few years back, but the disc golfers around the world petitioned, and their voices were heard. Well, let's get into the card. We got U.S. guy coming in, Thomas Gilbert. The Canadian canon there, and we see joining That's him right. Seppo Payu. That's Very familiar right. face for us on the European coverage. Definitely. Next up on the card, we have the Icelandic wonder boy, Blair Ornes Geiserson. Snazzy shirt as well. I like, I, li I like this style coming out from these players. They're confident on the course. They're confident in their game. And last but not least, we have the man, Josef Berg. Seeing him come off of some recent wins out in Kokodal. Happy to see what he's going to bring to the table today. We do look to be having mild weather, 22 degrees, wind speed between 5 and 15 kilometers an hour. I think we're going to see a good day here. Let's see what they're going to give to us. Bring it in on hole one, par three, 121 meters. Got that OB on the left side, and it will curl around the back side of the basket. Shots, I would say, are going to be a righty sidearm, maybe even a roller. Miss is to the right. Definitely. Not too difficult of a starting hole, but it does have some D on it. Going to have to really push it out there, control that flight angle. Definitely. We see with the gap up at the end of the green as well, distance and accuracy will be tested. Thomas Gilbert up first. Sidearm out the gate. He has plenty of power behind that. Coming in real smooth. Ow, oh, just catching the last tree. He should have an outside the circle putt. Next up, we got Seppo. Looking like he's going backhand. And there it is. He looks for the roller. We'll see if his cut angle is good. You did mention the miss to the right side as he just sneaks through. Look at it go. Come on, down the Get hill. Get some love. Wow, incredible shot by him there to sneak his way up to edge of circle. Looks like almost long, but he should be unobstructed. Really seemed like the disc angle was a little too tall on the roller, but he had that hillside really come into play. He did. He fought that hill the whole way as we see Blyer here looking for a similar line, but just not quite curling up the hill, okay. fighting with that. Come on around. OB stake as he places it beautifully, curls up. Also, That's within the circle, that looked about to be seven meters, six meters. Not bad. Last up, Josef Berg. Also with the roller. I believe that low ceiling definitely contributing to the difficulty of the air shot as these players opt to take it on the ground and hitting a tree. Also gets himself to edge of circle. We'll definitely be having some putts here and we'll see who gets off to a hot start. Thomas Gilbert up first. What a pleasure it is for us to have him here in Europe, showing us his skills. As he fires the Anheuser putt, and just a tad low, bounces it off the basket. Great bid to start the round. Absolutely. We'll see Seppo up next. Also looking to be outside the circle for the birdie. Oh, a very similar height to Thomas's, just a little bit low. And him looking downhill, perhaps wanting to control that height a bit more in case he were to go past it. We'll see Yosef now for his birdie. Just mm. a, a tad left. He, he had a good spin to that, a little bit nose up, but unfortunately was unable to connect. Blyer here looking for the lone birdie. 
closest of the bunch. As he fires it in. I love that seesaw motion, the back leg flying up, just puts it in. Very clean movement, very clean putt. Just a stab putt right in there for birdie, taking an early stroke on the card. The rest of these should be routine cleanups. Yosef with about four meters left. No big deal. And you can see with these beautiful trees and hills that this really is a, a well-maintained course. It has been around since its inception in 1995, hosted multiple PDGA majors, Stockholm Open 2012, European Masters 2014, and a ton of A to C tiers. So this is really a, a fantastic stage for our players to play on. Let's bring it into hole two. Another original hole on the course. Par three, 96 meters. Have this late tunnel with a low ceiling to hit, but you really gotta control the speed on the disc because right behind the basket is a huge drop off with trees and bushes behind it. Really can get you into trouble if you have too much speed on the disc. We'll see Blyer up first with the lone birdie on hole one. We'll see if he can carry his momentum through to the second hole now. Yeah, it looked a little early out of the hand. And yeah, that's catching the guardian trees at the center of the gap. Kicked him straight down, though. He should have a relatively easy up and down for the par. We'll see Thomas Gilbert now approach. Thomas off the tee. Looking like the right miss. Catching a late tree. But that will be in circle two. Perhaps a friendly bounce. Seppo here. And that small valley just behind the banners there may contribute to a bit of wind coming up the hill. Hitting their discs. You see a lot of these seem to be pushing left a bit. As Seppo slides up there, it looked like he got some very friendly ground play and got a few extra meters on the end of that flight. And that is what you would like to have. Control that speed. Use the ground. As Yosef now getting oh. a slightly longer turn. He fires a laser beam at the basket. Look at that. Park job. Beautiful shot from Yosef. Soft Anheuser. Landing flat on the ground, stopping the disc beautifully. He made the fairway look absolutely huge. As Blyer here with his approach looks to be a tad short, but should have a, a look at the basket cleanly. He's had a good putt so far. We'll see if he can continue. Thomas now from outside the circle for his birdie. Oh, oh what a great bid. Danger behind the basket. No fear from this man. He is going all out today. And beautiful design by Mats Luff here. A lot of treacherous greens in Yerva, forcing the accuracy. Blyer, unfortunately, just bouncing off the cage for his par putt. He will be tapping in a bogey. Seppo now. Yeah, there's the stepper. Fantastic birdie putt from Seppo there. Heart of the chains. Excited to see what he'll bring later today. Just full of potential. Early round one, front nine. No doubt. There's not too many trees on this course. It is. It does have its teeth with some trees in the woods here and there, but you will find a lot of open fairways. It's a good mixture. Absolutely. Thomas there, unfortunately, unable to connect out of that tree line. You can see how treacherous that hill is right behind the basket on that angle there. Just a bit over cresting it, and you could be edge of circle if not further, so... Definitely a tricky putt for our players here. And it looks like they should just tap them in. Hole two, definitely testing our players here already early on. That you are correct. Couple of birdies, couple of bogeys. Either way, moving on. Got hole number three. Another one from the original course. This is a dealer's choice i would call it you can have this huge spike hyzer for the righty backhand going over the top of these trees or if you've got the power you can do the side arm for the righty getting round to this more open left side 
But either way you do it, you gotta control the landing because you can see those stakes around the basket. They are not too far away either. Definitely not our players with a bit of OB to contend with. Let's see how they choose to control their distance here. Seppo opting for the big backhand hyzer over all of the trees. Now this takes a huge amount of power. Big spike and he is parked. Beautiful display there. Yosef perhaps looking to match that line. Also looking over the top. We'll see if he has the width and the power. Oh, absolutely, oh, he does. Just making it look easy. This is not as easy of a shot as it seems. I would say this is all of 125, 130 meters on the hyzer shot. Bly here going with the turnover. Ooh, but that's early. I believe he did fight through that first branch, but it must have taken... A bit of heat off, as you see, he ends short left, but does remain inbounds as the spotter flashes that green flag. He should be in about circle two, back end of circle two for the birdie putt. I like to see the forehand coming out. It looks like one of the biggest gaps as the Canadian cannon fires that forehand. Heiser off. Whoa. Beautiful shot. A wow. legitimate ace run by Thomas Gilbert there. Also managing to keep himself just a few meters away. Fantastic shot by him. And with three park jobs, Blyder's going to have a big putt to try and keep himself in the game still. Sitting at even, he has yet to receive a par. We'll see Blyder now for his long birdie. Oh, just a little low on that stepper. Similar, similar height. And he will be looking to take his first three of the round. Thomas looking to take his first two. We'll see if he can put himself back to even and on the scoreboard. There we go. Well done to Thomas Gilbert for his birdie putt. Yeah, just a formality there right outside the bullseye. Seppo now as well. <gasps> wow. Maybe just a little lapse in concentration there. Hate to see that from such a beautiful drive. He's going to have to control that emotions. Perhaps counting his chickens before they hatched. Unfortunate slip out the right side there from Seppo for his birdie. He will take the par. Still bogey free, but I'm sure he would have liked that one. As Yosef taps in his birdie, putting him to two down, is now leading our card. And great to see the huge gallery with this feature card. Hole four, par three, 100 meters. It's a slightly downhill shot, and you again have this late gap to hit with a low ceiling on it. I would say the play of choice is going to be a sidearm, trying to hyzer in through this gap and crashing in on this uphill slope where the basket is placed. Not too difficult of a hole, but here in the beginning of the round, this is one you really want to get. And looking at the forehand here, a bit of trouble if you go to inside, a bit of trouble if you go to wide. These guardian trees really forcing a small window to break through to the hillside. Yosef, perhaps a bit of foreboding there, goes a bit to inside and catches a tree 50 meters from the basket, roughly. We'll see Thomas now try to correct on that forehand line. Yeah, you can really see those double trees out there on the right side. It's about the spot you want to make sure you miss. Smooth throw by Thomas there. Thomas Catching executing a... that beautifully. Absolutely. Seppo now looks to be lining up the backhand. Ooh. Perhaps a roller attempt. Ah. Catching that same tree that Yosef did, spinning out into the middle of the fairway. I commend the creativity on that. I can understand with this elevated tee and the low ceiling, perhaps trying to play low to the ground. Now with that uphill slope right around the basket, that's not a bad play. Really slows the disc down very quickly once it gets to that uphill. Blyer now, also looking for that forehand shape, keeps it 
right in the middle, ah, oh, but catches a limb down the fairway and should be circle two with a long look, perhaps a bit longer, but yeah. with a look. Ceiling got in the way there a bit, but yeah. nonetheless, everyone's got some kind of a look. A couple of approaches here for Yosef and Seppo. Let's see what they can come up with from here. Just that one gap of trees to miss. A forehand flex, low to the ground, perhaps a bit too low, but definitely within that circle looking for his putt. Seppo now. As we hear the wind rustling the leaves, he fires off a hyzer into the hillside. Looked very controlled, very clean. And that will net him a par. Blyer up, first on the green for a birdie look. Oh, but as he fires that off, perhaps not quite the height to get it there. He will take an easy three, though, as we see Yosef now putting for his three. Beautiful pace on that putt. Great spin out of that putter. And he's going to go... Two down, Two for, down four. for four. That's not a bad start. Definitely not. We'll see Thomas now putting for his birdie with a fantastic forehand off the tee. Gets it in there and takes his second birdie of the round, perhaps easing in now. Yeah, you can really see the confidence in his putt right now. That uh, can be a dangerous thing. Seppo fully focused on that one. It's a good correction from the last putt. Absolutely. He'll take his three. Still still a clean round from Seppo. Perhaps left a few strokes on the putting green, but sitting at minus one bogey free. Definitely a clean performance. As Blyer taps in his par as well. Hole five. We've got our island hole for the day. This is one of the original holes. Fun fact, it was actually a par two back in the day. Come on now. Glad they changed that. I cannot handle par twos but not too far to speak of 71 meters just have to beat the two guardian trees in the front most righties are going to go backhand hyzer around them but the control of the disc angle is key here as you can see the basket is perched up on a downhill slope look out for those rollaways and another treacherous green with ob stakes all around We'll see Thomas here, looking for the backhand hyzer. I think likely what most of, if not all of our competitors will throw, and he does make the island, but perhaps a bit nose up, came, came a bit short. Yeah, that will be a little long look, but nonetheless, he is safe on the island. Yosef, here. with I believe a putter in his hand, looks to go a more direct route, but perhaps... Too low a speed or too severe of an angle does not get the distance past the stakes and unfortunately lands OB. Yeah, we will see Yosef using the Berg quite a bit today. As His namesake, perhaps. <laughs> the Berg Berg is a term that we have dubbed quite nicely oh, for Yosef. Oh, Seppo with what looked to be a very well-controlled hyzer, landing just by the basket and gets an unfortunate roll down that hill. Yeah, just too much disc angle on that. Maybe a bit too much spin as well. Definitely he connected be... on that down slope, caught a bit of momentum. Correct. He will be going to the drop zone from there. Bly are showing you how it's done, landing it softly on the downhill slope. He is going to be just about four meters away for his birdie putt. Berg, Berg from the drop zone. Effortless, point and shoot, getting himself nice and close on that hillside. And that's the way you want to land it on the green. Nice and soft, as much disc hitting the ground as possible. And Seppo not taking off too much there. Tries to position himself, but leaving a few meters left. Thomas from the knee, circles edge for the birdie. Oh, just high left. Splashes out the chains. But he is sitting right there for the par. Good attempt from the knee, no doubt. We'll see Blyer now, lone birdie, chance. Ah, as he cashes it, fantastic shot by him off the tee and a good putt to clean it up. 
And that will put him to one down for the round. Seppo has another short putt, unfortunately bleed out to the side. That will be a double bogey with the early OB and a few missed putts. Maybe a bit of frustration or lack of focus there. We'll see if he can correct it and try to clean it up. That one honestly looked good out of the hand. Caught a lot of chains. Just prodigy baskets don't like those side putts. Got to hit the middle. Tell us about hole six, Tony. Hole six, got a new basket position. Original tee, but different basket here. 148 meter par three. Pretty wide open, got the OB on the left side, but you're not worrying about that. You're worrying about hitting the gap into this forest here. Try to get into this guarded green, heavily, heavily guarded green with the trees. Surprise, surprise, treacherous basket placement again with the drop off directly behind and the trees on the way. We'll see Blyer here try to pierce this long gap. Course designer is after my heart. I love these types of shots. This is the most difficult to do when you have open and then a really tight gap at the very end of the flight. And you can see why the crowd and the players love this course, really the heart of disc golf in Stockholm. As Thomas here looks to be getting a bit more turn, perhaps hitting the gap. Wow. Oh, going deep, but he's catching some trees on the backside. Didn't go too far down the hill. Should have a look from there. Fires one long, was going well past 500. If not for that tree, is Josef also looking like he's taking the wide route, perhaps trying to crash through some of these guardians towards the basket? Oh, and he did get caught up on some cabbage there, probably at the edge of the tree line. We'll see if he has a look from there. Seppo, perhaps a bit more under stability here. Heiser flipping it up, trying to beat the gap. To be honest, that looked like a mid-range. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past the man. You know that he has that control and the distance. 148 meters with a mid-range. I don't care if it's downhill. That's crazy. All right, Blyer up first, just on the outside of that tree line. A lot of gaps to contend with to put himself close. Oh, and you can just see the teeth on this green here. Finding the gap, but leaving it a bit short. He will have about seven meters left to save the par. Believe it or not, with the perceived difficulty of this hole here, it actually came in at a th averaging 3.1 on this par three. So a lot of players managing to find that three and definitely some twos in the mix. Surprising considering how demanding it looks. I would totally agree. OB's not really in plays, more dividing the fairway, but you can see how much they have to work oh, oh. to get into this green. Yosef just coming up millimeters short, catching a nub. Good attitude him by out. him. You saw him flash the smile as he missed. He caught heavy chains from fairly far out. And unfortunately, another putt sneaking out as Teppo, Seppo taps in his par. Yosef as well. And with that missed putt, Blyder will be tapping in an unfortunate bogey, bringing him back to even for the round. You can see a small bit of frustration on his face, but he has been all over the place. Hole 7, par 3, 107 meters, going back the other way from hole 6, as you can see again, OB on that left side, dividing the fairways, but we're not worried about that, because we're going back into the woods again after this open hill here. You can see new basket placement, new pin position, tough, tough green. What's that? Sloping green, treacherous basket? That's Yerva, all right. Oh, I love it. Thomas Gilbert up first, sitting at one down. We know he has the power to fire one into the hillside. We'll see if he can hit his shape. Ooh, that is way early out of the hand. That's got to get down before it may be OB. Oh, I do believe that tree saved him from fading OB, caught him at the edge. He will be quite pinched off from the green, but he is safe. Yosef now. Looking like he is taking a more inside line, aiming to pierce that gap off one. Definitely makes his way to the hillside there. 
Great shot from Yosef. As we take a look at his form. Compact, clean. Keeping himself upright, being able to have that Anheuser angle come into the disc. Seppo now, as you see the leaves above his head doing a little dance in this wind. We'll see how he contends with that. Looking to be fading out a bit early, but also making it to the hillside. He'll definitely have a, an obstructed putt from there. Good throw by Seppo. Blyer up last. That's got to get over. Uh, just didn't get the Anheuser angle on it. But he did penetrate the trees. He should have also an obstructed look for the birdie. Thomas up first now from his near OB throw. We'll see if he can create something. Wow. He gives himself a real opportunity through what looks like nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Fantastic job by him. Blyer up now looking for his two. Oh, oh catch great him. run. Even strong side it looked like. High right, perhaps a bit too right. The Seppo there, unfortunately hitting a tree on his long putt. Yosef now hunting the birdie. The hair he is. The burgy, perhaps, as he puts that one in. Well done oh, to him to yeah. take it two on hole seven. Thomas Gilbert tapping in his par. And Blyer as well. A couple pars and Yosef walking away with the two, taking a stroke on his card mates. Let's move it on. Hole eight, par three, 96 meters. Got this really sloping fairway from left to right. Disc angle control will be essential on this hole. We can take a look here as we come into the basket. It's also green is very, very sloped. Got to control that landing. Like I had said, we can see a lot of roll away potential on this hole. You can really see there with that beautiful scenery, the spring and summer months, the foliage just increasing in size so rapidly. Every week you come out, you could be playing a different hole effectively. As Yosef looks to be throwing over the top of these trees, can he control his descent? Oh, no. There's that roll that Tony oh, mentioned. Stop. Oh, my gosh. Wow. As he just got so much distance on that downhill, landing it above the basket and ending 10, 15 below it. Such a perfect shot, but getting punished with that disc angle. Thomas up to the tee now, trying to give it his all. Can he have that softer landing? Oh yeah, that's what you want. You could see from Thomas right out of the hand, it was lots of Anheuser and hanging on to that angle for a long time, allowing that disc to land much flatter on the ground once it hit there by the basket. And I think it is quite an obstructed view of the green. Perhaps these players not quite sure what ground play they're getting off the tee. It is semi-blind. The Seppo does give a soft landing, a little roll towards the basket, just a tad short, but definitely played. Blyer now. I'm looking like a putter. Just rolling it over a bit. It's got to get the stability. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he just gave it enough height to crest those trees, but not enough to do a big fade-out roll. We'll have a look at his form now. Very lengthy frame. He gives that a good snap. Yosef up first from behind the trees, just having to lay it up. Looks so, like so he punishing had nothing on what from was there. A great shot, effectively, or looked to be. Seppo now, edge of circle for his birdie. Oh, just high left for Seppo, and that will splash out. Blyer taps in his birdie. Well done to him. Seppo, unfortunately, catching a lot of metal today, but not that many putts. Also well done to Thomas there, tapping in his birdie. And Yosef for the par. Yeah, I don't want to say that he's slightly off today, but it's sure kind of looking like that on this front nine. We'll say this. When the man's on, he's on. Oh, yeah. Well, let's finish it out with hole nine, par four, 178 meters. This tee shot is really wide open, but placement is key here, as you need to come into this tree line, set yourself up for this gap. Anywhere too far to the right or left is going to pinch you off severely, as you want to come into this green extra soft, we can see that downhill slope right on the basket. 
this fantastic course design testing every aspect of their game. We'll see Thomas up first with a birdie on the last hole. Looking, looking for the big hyzer. Going huge D off the tee. Is this going to swing left, though? Oh, and he does get to the mouth of that tunnel, but just a little bit pinched off. He may have to go through the trees rather than around. We'll see if he wants to take that risk on his second. Blyer up now. You can see his round very interesting. A few pars thrown in, lots of birdies, lots of bogeys. He really goes for it. He has a very offensive game. Oh, yeah, lots of color on this card. As he throws a flatter shot, but perhaps hits one of the earlier trees, he'll be just just shy, a bit short of the mouth of that tunnel leading to the green. And Yosef now. Also opting for that flatter line. We'll see if he can beat those trees or if he has a similar fate. Better kick. That is a good kick. He is in the middle of the fairway there. And perhaps left enough to have a good look through that tunnel. I would agree. Seppo now. Also opting for the high hyzer. We'll see the wind pick that up a little bit. Swing it back left. Oh no, that got way left. He might be in the bushes there. We'll have to see if he has a line to the basket. I, I do think he bit off enough distance that if he can do his usual Seppo wizard stuff through these trees, he may have a long eagle look. It depends how oh, oh, wow. obstructed he is as that skip shot flares just by the chains. Oh man, I didn't even mention that there was OB down there, but it seems like Yosef might be safe with the banners. That small bank offering some... Some safety from the OB. The spike highs are so dangerous on this green. As it comes flying down. We did not see any red flags. He should be safe. Seppo, you can see the trouble that he put himself in. Bleeding too far left. Catching Good. first available there. Unfortunately, yes. And he's going to be up again. The good distance on his first, unfortunately, taken out of play as his second is hitting an early obstacle. And his third. No. Struggling here today. Seppo will see Thomas now with his long look. He chooses to go through the trees. And effortless wow. approach or effortful as he falls forwards there. Beautiful Full commitment gap. there. Full commitment and just hits the gap so well. Stop, stop, stop. Ah, just leaking a little bit long for Seppo. He's going to have a good six meters on an uphill putt coming back. We can see this is Blyer's Spike Heiser landing zone as he seemed to slide that up to the basket. Not a bad idea. Coming up a little short and then having the power just to go over the top of the trees. Yosef fires wow. that in from down on the hillside through the trees. Beautiful height, beautiful placement on the stripe. Love to see the emotion coming out of that man as he snags a beautiful birdie. Well done to him. Seppo now. Believe this would be to save bogey. Oh, double bogey, my bad. Missed a stroke there, but he capitalizes on the putt nonetheless. Or sorry, no, that is a single bogey. I take that back. He did take the five there. On this par four, definitely a tricky hole. As Thomas taps in his birdie, very clean by him. The huge highs are off the tee, and then making his way through that wooded approach. Made it look easy on what is absolutely a difficult hole, averaging 4.2. Well, that'll wrap up the front nine for us, guys. Let's take a look at the leaders here. We have Thomas and Yosef, both at minus three. Blyer coming in at minus one. And Seppo having a bit of trouble on that ending of the front nine here with plus two. Plenty of holes to go to get back in the game, though. Absolutely. We'll see the fields now with a hot round by Otto Makinen, minus six through the front nine. We see a few fives there tied for second, and many players at minus four under. Definitely some hot starts here. Well, stay tuned, guys. Catch us on the back nine. Excited. A lot of par fours, a lot of distance. Let's see some bombs.